Hi there, and welcome to Live with Sujay, Headliners of Hope. We're coming to you from LTV all the way at Wayne Scott Studios in Wayne Scott, New York. And I am from Sag Harbor, the village of Sag Harbor. One of the reasons I moved there was not only is it a historically African-American community where I lived, Azure Est, but I have a village of sister friends. We hang out on the beach together. We just share ideas and thoughts. Many of us are at that post-retirement age and we're on stages of life. And so we're in the fall season, so it's a good time to talk about seasons of life. And my special guest today is Barbara Britton. Welcome. <laughs> Oh, hi. It's Thank so good. You, we're sister friends, but you're also just a wonderful woman who's done a whole lot with your career. So we're going to talk about what you're doing now in retirement. But let's talk about your last post. You were with Essence Magazine. And mm -hmm. what was your title there? I was the vice president, associate publisher of Essence Magazine. Okay. And so in that role, what did you do? I ran the sales organization. I had offices. I had like 15 salespeople. Wow. Uh, we sold all of the advertising time for all of the products that Essence produced. Um, the magazine, certainly. Uh, we started the Essence Music Fest, which in New everybody's Orleans. in love with. Oh, um, yes. All of, any kind of sponsorship, any kind of revenue um, was what my purview was. I was wow. what they would call a suit. Well, thank you for, you know, because black women all over the world have benefited from not only the magazine, but the festival, and people continue to go. Generations are going now. But prior to that, you were with Black Enterprise Magazine. Uh, prior, that's like in my, Moons ago? That's many moons ago. But you were mentored by the Earl Graves. I've been very fortunate. I have been extremely fortunate in my career. I have... Um, been guided to the right places. Mm -hmm. um, I have always met people that, um, you know, appreciated what I could do and helped me move into these positions. Um, I started coming out of school at the Black Economic Research Center. Really? Which is run by the Ford Foundation. Yes. It was a think tank. Yes. And in doing that work, which, you know, um, was very, very important because we're talking the 70s now. Now I'm giving away my age. But that's all right, but that's all, the I'm stages. On the, I'm on the right side. Yes, so okay. <laughs> yes, stages. exactly. And um, we produced a review of black political economy. Oh, my goodness. Which is now housed at Howard. Yes. Uh, the 21st Century Foundation. Yes, I remember okay. that. Yes. That's part of what we did. And we wrote, we did a study, um, which is very relevant now, called Only Six Million Acres. And talk about Where what? in 1972, we had chronicled how much land black people still owned in the continent of the United States. Wow. And Do you know what the numbers are today? I don't know what they are today, That's but six. in 72, wow. they were 6 million. And was that down from a number? That was down because what we were trying to highlight is, of course, some of the you know challenges that we had, uh, you know, people had been through as mm -hmm. landowners, uh, some of the challenges, uh, particularly in the South. Yes, yes. Okay, in terms of hereditary rights. Exactly. You know, exactly. and that kind of a thing. And through various different, you know, ways, political ways. And some of it was, you know, as we well know, some of it was actually... Um, determine right. and, and, and policy. Yes, exactly. Basically. Exactly. So doing that at that time, we had chronicled six million acres of mm. land was left. Wow. So that that was like my background. Yeah, basically. exactly. Is that is the Black Economic Research Center still going? These no, days? Okay. No, it was for not. that season. Yeah. yeah. No, it was like it would last a long time. I mean it I had remember. to be 10, 15 years, basically. Yes, I remember the 21st Century Foundation yeah. particularly. Yes, definitely. definitely. So, so what, what makes a good headliner? This show is called Headliners of Hope. What makes a good headline? Regarding hope? No, regarding a magazine. So when you when they're oh, putting you know, it all together. Lines. Yeah, cover lines. What makes a well, good one? Uh, as I said, I'm a suit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm not a writer. I'm a right. suit. Right, exactly. But, that's um, but certainly, you know, we would, you know, you try to pull out what's new. First of all, you've got, let's go, but now we're back in the days when there were magazines. Yeah, exactly. And we're there were talk magazines about yes. and newsstands and that kind of a thing. And studies have shown it takes a consumer three seconds to make a decision. Three seconds. In terms of what? 
they're going to buy. Interesting. Anywhere from three seconds to two minutes, let's say. Wow, wow. Well, they're going to make that decision. So you've got to come up with something mm -hmm. that's going to grab their eye. Right. Uh, most magazines use celebrities. That's when the big celebrity things started yes, happening. Yes, yes. Um, but with Essence, the cover lines were always of substance. Essence was not only, was, well, Essence was not primarily beauty and fashion. Right, because it had though, a lot of substance. Even though what they did in that area was still, I think, revolutionary, because we're talking back to the time when, you know, black people were not in ads, there was no, you know, black makeup. And, and certainly only, not on the cover of magazines. Yeah. Cover. Um, mm -hmm. So a good line, I, I think one of the lines I think that I know Susan's very proud of that I think that uh, and that's Susan also, Taylor who's also Taylor, our neighbor who, in uh, Azures that I think illustrates what Essence was Essence was the first magazine to write about AIDS interesting and they put on the cover a beautiful black woman mm. that looked like a model yes and the tagline was something, it wasn't I have AIDS, mm -hmm. but something with AIDS. Yes. Because you know, what we were trying to do is to show people what AIDS looks like. Exactly. It doesn't, you know, everybody thinks it's, you know, this or that, but right. AIDS was at that time affecting everybody. So it would be things like that. That's so it's, amazing. It might be something that heavy, or it might be something like... Um, how to keep your man happy. Out of exactly, yeah. exactly. And three generations. That, all, them, that yeah. always gets them. I know. The other thing I think that was a big seller was the fit at any age. I don't know if you remember. I that. remember. I was getting ready to say that because they had these beautiful women who were 70s, 80s, 90s. 70s, 80s and that yes. looked like they were 35. Exactly. We so, have a girlfriend like that Mercedes. Yeah, we have girlfriends. Yes, exactly. we also like that now. Yeah. So that's what you try to do. Yeah. You know, with the, it's that hook, what they call the hook. It's the hook. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, you got your subscriber base and then you have your, have you know, probably in a magazine business, well, at least in, let's say, with Essence, the primar the, uh, primarily you're, you had subscriptions. Exactly. But you must have had 25 to 30% of your sales coming off the newsstands. Those newsstands, because I walk so by and I to. look for the picture and then that draws yeah. you in. So I do a lot of public speaking and preparing mm -hmm. people for public life. And mm -hmm. so I say you have to have your hook, mm -hmm. your look. And right. your book. So now you have to have something that grabs them and that you can have your back of room sales. But it's yeah. interesting about that time piece that you grab a person's attention between three seconds, three and, seconds two minutes. and two minutes. Because even now with social media, I'm trying to get technical now and learn all of this stuff. But you have to capture them in those shorts. You can't yeah. do like these 20 minute, 30 minute videos. You have to cap capture them in that same time frame or their attention span is gone. Exactly. Yeah. It's even, as I said, it's even more challenging now that we're on the internet. Exactly. Basically. So let's talk about magazines. What happened? Why did the they... The internet. So the internet just a substitute. Each era has its thing. The internet, just like radio, mm -hmm. and then there was TV. The, yes. Magazines, and then there was the internet. So actually, um, it, was an, it was an industry-wide challenge. Yes. Because everybody went to websites, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, um, this is before mag a lot of magazines would try to do both. Right. But what I've seen happening now is that more of the magazines are online. Yes. Because that's where... You know, yeah. that's where people are now, basically. And that's so. where you're all on the technology. plane, on the train, and you have to move fast. Again, like, I can only see the headline, and I read a little clip of it. It was straight technology. Yeah, yeah. And it happened across the board. You know, it wasn't a black magazine thing. It wasn't a white magazine thing. It wasn't, you know, any of that. It was just print in general. It was general. just print in general. Even basically. newspapers are facing that. But let's exactly. talk about the power of media, because Essence Magazine, when it came out, in 83, I was licensed to ministry in order to ministry and I got my first church and there was a blurb about this big in essence that talked about this woman being ordained and from that one blurb in essence my whole career blew up mm -hmm. you know somebody saw it at Benedict College and invited me to speak to their mm -hmm. students and it's just the power of media mm -hmm. so can we talk about like you know even the power of media still even with the industry changing mm -hmm. what did you see in terms of the power like what does it do to persuade and then pull people in well, Essence, as you know, there weren't many magazines speaking to black women. Not at so all. So Essence is, and probably still is, the Bible. Yeah. 
And what you put into there, I mean, our subscription might have, our subscriber base and circulation might have been a million plus. Mm -hmm. But every magazine reads, turns over four times. You know, right. you put yes. that magazine in your house, particularly a magazine like Essence, which yes. is multi generational. Yes. So you got the teenager reading it, you got the the mother reading it, you got the grandmother reading it. So anything that and we then wrote beauty about, salons, <laughs> and the beauty salons, it circulates, you yeah. know. So um, it yeah. just had that kind of pull, and we always had that challenge. We were trying to explain to the advertising business the impact of Essence on their audience, how it differed from, let's say, even a Vogue reader. Yeah, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or an L reader, or, uh, you know, maybe Oprah had that kind of pull. Too, yes, yes. Oprah. Yes. But certainly, um, when you have something that is for you, by you, and of you, yes. which is what it was, mm -hmm. Um, it had a tremendous uh, influence, basically. I mean, we look at what we were able to do from the magazine, and my big joke, I remember when we started the Music Fest, it was like, who goes to New Orleans in July? <laughs> but if who goes to New Orleans in July? We were like, okay. And 200,000 people. At least, you in know. July. In July. And hot in, on New Orleans. And New I was Orleans. one of those there. You know, and that's... that's yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, so let's talk, cool. but because really what we're talking about is timing is everything. You have a yeah. good idea, but you also have to have the timing of it. So Essence was right on time because it was a void. Um, the internet is on time for people. So I'm not sure when this will air, but everyone's talking about Kamala Harris being a candidate and that it's her time because years ago, a black woman couldn't have run for office. So let's talk about timing of life because you're now okay. in a new season of oh, your life, <laughs> and talk about timing. How does it feel post-corporate, post-magazines, post-sales, post-suit? Talk about it. Well, it feels pretty good, I yeah. must say. You know, I've been retired a long time. Okay. You okay. know, I've done some consulting work mm -hmm. for some of the younger people that wanted to start websites. Oh, nice. You know, nice. And how to write their presentations, how to put that together, who to talk to. So I've done that kind of stuff. Amazing. Um, but this season of my life uh, is quite different. I'm, I'm really quite surprised I that I'm here. You've moved out to the East <laughs> End full time. <laughs> yes. You know, I... Um, my apartment in New York, I moved in when my daughter was five weeks old. Oh, my and goodness. And my oldest daughter was five years old. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Yes. These kids are now 48 and 54. And you're out here. And now. I moved out of, you know, my New York apartment. My big challenge, of course, has been downsizing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And speaking about the Internet, you know, things pop up, you know, like <laughs> downsizing, how to downsize. It's a little more difficult than people. It really, it is. Yeah, it is. I downsized and moved my stuff into yeah. this house out I'm, here. It's... I'm like putting a toothpaste back in a tube. Oh. That's what I always say. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, it's good. I mean, it's good. I did a lot of traveling. I really checked off all my bucket. You know, okay. All this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I've got two grandchildren. Oh, wonderful. 19 and 14. Yeah. I don't know where, you know, these kids come in your house and you go like, wow. But you spend time <laughs> they get so with them. so big. I think basically. one of the greatest relationships yeah. is a grandparent yeah. with a grandchild. And you spend time with them. You spend a lot of time this summer. Yeah. And, and so it's good to have the intergenerational thing going. Yeah. But you did your retirement in stages. So you did some consulting mm -hmm. and now you just. I it kind of phased, phased into it. Into it. Yeah. Phases. Yeah. Phases. So it's been, uh, I tell you, I came out here, I had been out here in the winter. Yes. And you know, I bought my house in 2002. And uh, it was just me and my two daughters, right? And, it was, you know, it's a small house. Yes. And I'm like, oh, this is good. You know, it's a summer house. You come out, drop your bags, hit the beach, everybody's good, right? Take all your stuff home yes. right, when you leave, basically. And um, I had been out here some time. We had done a Christmas out here, Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. but I had never stayed a long time. Yeah. Okay, so then the pandemic hit. 
and I came out both winters of the pandemic. Yes, I, I have stayed. a picture of us on the beach actually well, making we a were toast. Champagne on New Year's Day. On New Year's Day on the beach. Bundled up, right? Yeah, I have to get that photo for them. Yeah, but wonderful. And so I came out in uh, the pandemic, and I did the winter. Yeah, you know, and I like. I could do the winter out here. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, global warming. So it has given us a winter that's not so cold, brutal cold and cold. Brutal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's an unfortunate situation. But um, I was like, I could do the winter. I got my emergency lights and I got my, you know, everything. Yeah, yeah. Didn't have to use any of them. Okay. Uh, thank <laughs> goodness. We never lost power. I don't know what it is about our section. We don't lose power. That's true. It that's goes true. out, it comes right back right on. Right back on, you know. And what I find myself, what I caught my. I needed a kinder, gentler life. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, so kinder, gentler. Kinder, gentler. Life. And New York City is not kinder, gentler it's as you age. It's not as kinder, as mm -hmm. gentler as it used to be. And I'm a city girl. I'm a city girl too. But those subway girl. steps and the pace now, I don't know if I can do anymore. Uh, so I found my. I came out. I rented my New York apartment, and I I I sent my stuff out here first. Okay. Okay. And okay. Then my body came out. Yes. Second, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, as I said, I'm still trying to put the toothpaste back in the tube. But what I found that was really interesting, I found myself laughing. You know, yeah. like just smiling. And it's almost like I had to catch myself. Not that I don't smile, but, you know, I, I but would... But you did it. I would... Yeah, I did it. It's done. But also, I'm looking at, you know, I'm laughing at the turkeys. Yes, yes. Laugh. You know, I get up and I'm looking at, because my property faces a uh, a natural preserve. Yes. You know, okay, so, so you see. the back of me mm -hmm. is a natural preserve. And I found myself really just busting out laughing wow. in the morning when I got up. Yeah. And I was just happy. It was just a different kind of aura out here. Exactly. You know? This I morning like, I did the same thing. I walked walk at Haven's Beach because I can right. kind of time it. And just the stillness, the water, the chill, even the seagulls and storks were just, you know, chilling. And there was, it was like, you don't have to rush. It's exactly. okay. That's what I had to teach myself. You know, it took me a while. Now, you it's, said in retiring. Yes. I'm still on corporate time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. In my head, I'm on a tie. I was on a time frame. Yeah. Got to do this by this. Got to do that by that. Got to exactly. do this by this. And then it hit me when I got. Wait a minute, Barbara. You really don't have to. Your time is your my own. Time as is it's my time. I don't yeah. have to really do this by this time. Exactly. Basically. And it's it's just been good. Um, I have friends that come out. They're like, "What do you do? What do you do in the winter?" It's, Always stuff going on. Out always, here. always film you know, festivals and jazz everything. festivals and Bay Street Theater and, and the cinema. I mean, it's, it's just everything. It's going. I've taken a quilting course. Oh my goodness! I'm trying to find my. What's funny is that I had asked a person who'd been out here um, um, when I was thinking about it. Um, Donna Barnes. Yeah, Donna runs, was my classmate right. for high school. I said, "So what? What do you do out here?" So, you know, she does different things. And, you know, and she, she's at you, Shelter Island. And, she, and you know, yeah. So I said, okay, I got to develop something. So I got to find my talent. Okay, <laughs> okay. So I took a quilting course. Okay. That's not my talent. <laughs> <laughs> you said by process of elimination, we're finding what's not. Not me. Um, I took a painting course. Okay. 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 That's not my talent. Okay. All right. What? So that's um, all. I'm, I'm saying I got to have some artistic talent. Well, you yeah. know what happens for me is I get my ideas for short films. Remember, I started, when well, you see me with a camera right. all the time, but I started realizing you can make short films on your camera, from your mm -hmm. camera. And so I get my ideas. This is my deprogramming, detaching from everything else, and just letting my creative genes and juices flow. Mm -hmm. And so now I have all of these things I want to do, and I can just shoot them. I don't need a film crew. I can just kind of shoot it, kind of put some stuff together. Yeah. So finding, yeah. you know, finding that. Yeah, I got to explore, you know. Explore. I just never, I don't know, when you're in the city, you know, it's not that I was 
I don't know. I just wasn't thinking like that yeah. in the city. And I you're was, more in a survival mode. You're yeah, kind you're of making you know, sure you get to point A and point B safely other. and all of that, you exactly. know? Exactly. So I'm still on the search for what my talent is, and I don't think it's artistic. Well, you, you'll I, I find think it. I think i got to give up on that, that aspect you'll of it. You'll find it. You'll find it. But yeah. so when I was in the city and had the house out here, I found that the key to living in the city was having a place to get to. Yeah. And even living out here full time, going to the Getting city back. now and then just helps kind of keep the juices and it reminds mm -hmm. you of why you love it out here so exactly. much. I was like, oh, I did this for how many years? You know, because it's not an age-friendly city, you mm -hmm. know, an elder-friendly city. So, you know, you're just like, ooh, it's going fast. But the show is called Headliners of Hope. What yeah. are you hopeful about? I am hopeful about my family. Mm. I am hopeful, and it's very important to me to pass on generational wealth. Yes, yes. You know, having been, you know, having been an economist, having been in that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I am hopeful about. I'm really hopeful about when we're all together. You know, yes. when you, you, we got such a dynamic group of women out here, we do. and it's like you know, just sometimes you know we're on the beach and we're talking and we, we you know whatever, and sometimes you just have to go, wow, you know, yeah, this is really pretty special. It is special. It's really it's special. pretty special. And we so think I'm of really each other and that. look out for each other. It's so mm -hmm. wonderful. Definitely. So I have this formula question I ask every guest: A plus B plus C equals success. So from your life experiences, what's your A, B, and C, and what makes success for you? Research. Know what the hell you're talking about. Excuse Ooh. me, I didn't mean to say that. No, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hell's in the Bible, so it's, it's okay. Okay. Do your research. Do your research. You know what you're talking about. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yes. Make your plan. Make your plan. Okay. Okay, this is who you are, this is what you're going to do, how are you going to make that happen? Who do you need to, you know, mm -hmm. what, what do you have to develop in terms of lines of communications and connections? And relationships and relationships. And what all black women do all their lives, work your butt off. Mm. But mm. do you, I, I, mm. just do your research. You know what I, yes. I say, I've spoken to young people and, you know, uh, I still like, I'm almost still like a mentor to a lot of my salespeople. I run into a lot of people that say, oh, Miss Britton, you know, you helped me do this and you helped me do that. And I don't even remember some of wow. the stuff. But. Wow. So I, let's, I was in Atlanta. I ran into a young couple. They wanted, what did they want to do? They wanted to do a music fest. So I said, well, have you research what it takes to put a music fest together. Mm, See, yes. you go around with this bubble in your head, like this is what I want to do, but it gets to be, that's just the pretty part of exactly. it. Exactly. That's not the, the gritty how part you make it work. Yeah. So it's like, oh yeah, so music fest, so who you, where are you going to have it? What's your venue? Um, who you want to have there? How right. you getting them? And what's your budget? And, start, and I start telling them, just take out a notebook and write this down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Else you'll be one of those people sitting around going, oh, I was going to do this, and I was going to do that, and I would have, could have, should have, but and I can't, Here's my little notebook by. right here, my oh. little notebook. I write notes, uh, scribble some of them, some of them a little more in order, but I take notes, and I'm even taking a course online because I mm -hmm. want to do these short films. What does it take? You know, who do I need to be connected with? All of the questions. Mm -hmm. But you had an interesting C, you work your butt off. Do you ever finish paying your dues? I don't think so. You know why, given our, given our History. I'm very political. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very black nationalist kind of oriented. Yes, yes. Uh, no, I don't think you ever stop paying your dues mm. because it's not me that was hanging from that tree. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not me um that went through all of the stuff that we'd gone through you know in the south to some of the family stories we have and yeah. what they did to enable me i'm first person and two people in my family went to college mm. um 
One is it was an ambassador to Barbados. We did pretty good when we went. Okay. Teddy Britton. Yes. He was also the undersecretary. Oh, under, Teddy Britton. Teddy Britton. He was also an undersecretary of commerce under Nixon. Yes. He was a Republican, too. Yes, yes. Um, Where did you go to school? I went to Hampton, and okay. I finished at City College. Okay. And I went to grad school at the New School for Social Research wow. and Urban Planning. Wow. You mentioned an interesting thing. I went to uh, the Legacy Museum, the National Legacy Museum, by Brian Stevenson, who we saw right. recently yeah. um, in Alabama, and it was a moving experience. And I came there right after I had gone to Ghana, West Africa, mm. where you saw the point where the slaves were, went out. Mm. So what moved you? to become centered on our history and understanding, like you said, it wasn't you hanging from that tree. Was there a moving trigger? Um, because those experiences moved me beyond capacity. Well, in my, listening to my family, mm -hmm. um, my mother was very dynamic. Um, just family history, uh, when I went to, when I transferred back from Hampton to City College, I was in the economics department, mm. one of the few black people in the economics department wow. in City College. And again, I was fortunate. Um, I had a professor who I think I took a course and this, you know, we started, you know, reading and studying and stuff, but certainly the history of my family. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just sitting around and listening to mm. what they went through to be here to do what they were able to accomplish. Right. I don't think I'll ever pay that back. Exactly. I exactly. Really don't. And, and I don't and I don't mind. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't mind. But we've got to leave it better for the next. Yeah, we've got to leave yeah. it better for the next for the next crew. So So interesting last point as we close. Mm -hmm. You're really talking about legacy. You're talking about generational wealth. You're talking about leaving it better for the next. What do you hope your legacy will be? That I left generational wealth, that I've helped a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I, I, as I say, I keep bumping, my kids are bumping into people. Yes, that were that impacted by you. Know me and tell my kids what I did for them. So I hope I've helped as many people as I can and shared my knowledge. Um, well, I you helped certainly me. I want to build an I certainly want to build. Um, you know, institutions that are going to benefit, you know, black people. And last forever. And, and we're out of time. I hope you'll come back again. You've helped me by being here today, and you've helped <laughs> me by staying with us today. Barbara Britton, wonderful headliner of Hope, my sister friend from the Sag Harbor Village and from Nineveh, and we just thank you for sharing with us. Thank you for my production team. Stay tuned for more of Live with Sue Jay.